Hey everyone, and welcome back for another video. Today we are talking all about continuous brew systems for your kombucha tea. So maybe you're newer to brewing your own kombucha, or maybe you've been doing it for years, but are really interested in trying a continuous brew setup. I'm gonna show you how you can put one together at home for about half the cost as if you were to purchase a kit from Amazon or a site like Kombucha Camp. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. All right, so what you're gonna need to put together a continuous brew vessel is a beverage dispenser. I purchased this one at my local home goods store. It was $16.99. They also have things like this at Target, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, home goods stores, big lots, especially this time of year. It's summertime, a lot of people are having outdoor barbecue parties, and so beverage dispensers are fairly easy to find. This one in particular is a one and a half gallon. They usually come in sizes from one gallon all the way up to three gallons, so purchase what size you're gonna need based on how much kombucha you're gonna be making at one time. This one came with the beverage dispenser and a clear glass lid, which you're not going to need, and a stand. I also don't use the stands in my house. I do have two small kids and that to me just seems dangerous. I'm worried about them tipping that over. So I'm really just interested in the main beverage dispenser jar with the spigot. I also purchased some temperature strips from Amazon. These came in a pack of three and it was $5. I prefer the beverage dispensers with the smooth sides so that way the temperature strips stick really easily. This is not something that you need to have, but if you're interested in monitoring kind of the temperature in your house and what's working best for fermenting your tea, the temperature strips do come in handy, but it's not necessary. Then I also purchased a two pack of the stainless steel spigots. Again, this is not something you're going to need right away. So the plastic nozzles that come on the beverage dispensers will work for a while, but I did find a couple of years ago when I tried to do that, that it worked for the first few months and then after that it got really slow with dispensing the liquid and I ended up having to replace it anyway. So rather than wait a couple months for this one to go bad, I'm actually just gonna replace it right out the gate. So you're also gonna need some kind of cloth cover to cover your tea when it's ready to sit on your counter and ferment. So I showed you in a tutorial here on this channel how to create these fun little um, covers for your kombucha, but if you don't know how to sew and this isn't something you wanna take the time to do, you can also use a tea towel a washcloth, a small hand towel with a rubber band to cover your tea as well. So I'm gonna start by removing the plastic spigot from this jar and I'm gonna replace it with one of the stainless ones that I purchased. Once I have the stainless one on in place, I'm gonna fill this about halfway full of water just to make sure that there's no leaks around where the spigot connects to the glass jar. Once that's done, if it looks like it's not leaking, I'm going to put some warm water in here with some vinegar Give it a good scrub so then I can replace that with my sugar tea when it's ready. So start off by removing the plastic spigot that came on your beverage dispenser. It might be black plastic like mine is, it could be a silver plastic. You'll wanna go ahead and unscrew it so you can remove it completely from the container. So be sure once you've removed the spigot from the container that you also take the clear gasket out as well. These stainless steel spigots come with a gasket that fits for that particular spigot, so you'll want to remove all the parts that originally came on your dispenser. So at this time you can also remove any extra stickers that may have come on your dispenser jar. This is really more for aesthetic purposes, so if you don't care about having a few stickers on there, you can go ahead and leave those. If you have any issues getting the stickers off, you can also try hot water or some lemon essential oil. So now it's time to grab one of those stainless steel spigots and let's go ahead and get that put on. So these ones unfortunately do not come with directions to do that. So I'm gonna take this step a little bit slow. So hopefully it helps save you guys a headache trying to get this thing installed on your beverage dispenser. So you could get everything removed from the packaging and wash your spigot now if you want to. I usually like to install it first and then once I'm cleaning my beverage dispenser jar, I run some vinegar and hot water through the spigot and wipe off the outside then. So take all the plastic pieces out of the little baggies, unbox everything and you should have two metal gaskets and two plastic ones like I'm showing you here. Next up, we're gonna remove the nut that is on the spigot itself. So you're gonna unscrew that so it comes off completely. So 
once you have the nut completely removed from the spigot, grab one of the metal gaskets and slide that all the way down until it touches the front of the spigot. Next up, you're gonna grab one of the plastic silicone gaskets that came in your package and you're gonna slide that down to meet up with the backside of the metal gasket. Push it so it's really tight. At that point, once you get that on all the way, the metal gasket shouldn't slide. So next up, take the threaded end of the spigot and you're gonna insert that into the hole on your beverage dispenser with a spigot on the outside. Now grab the second plastic silicone gasket and you're gonna slide that over the threaded end that is inside your beverage jar. So make sure you press that all the way up towards the glass container. You want this to be really snug. You're gonna end up securing it anyway once you put the other metal gasket on and the nut, but just make sure that silicone gasket is really tight up next to that beverage jar. So now grab that second metal gasket that came in your kit and you're going to slide that right up next to that plastic silicone one that you just put on. It's time to replace that stainless hex nut that you removed from the beginning steps and we're going to put that back on. So slide that over the end and you're just going to turn it until it snugs up close next to that metal gasket that you just put on. So make sure you're taking your time with this step. If you're threading it on incorrectly, it could potentially strip it and then it won't stay on at all. So take your time, spin that nut in a clockwise direction slowly so it feels like it's going on fairly easily. At this point when you start tightening up the nut, everything should start fitting together really nicely and it should start to snug up quite a bit. So once you have that nut on relatively tight, the next step is just making sure that it is super tight without cracking the jar. So to do that, I put one of my hands inside the jar, I hold the nut steady, and I actually turn the spigot in a clockwise motion from the outside to snug it up as much as I possibly can. This is gonna make sure that there is no leaks and that it is tight and sealed. So these stainless spigot setups come with an extra little mesh metal filter. You don't have to use this. If you are gonna use it, you're gonna place it on the inside of your jar over the end of that spigot. I am just gonna tell you that um, sometimes with kombucha and the stringers that you will get in your tea, these can get plugged really easily. So I would recommend that if you're going to put it on, you just make sure that you remove it after you drain each batch of tea, give it a quick rinse so that way you know that your kombucha is gonna flow out of that spigot without getting plugged. And just like that, your spigot is installed. So now I'm just taking a clean, dry rag. I'm wiping off the side of my container where I wanna apply my temperature strip. So now figure out where you wanna place that temperature strip on your jar before peeling off the backing. You can put it right up front, you can put it on the side or in the back if it's not something you're gonna be looking at all the time. Now that you've figured out where you want to place your temperature strip on your jar, take that backing and peel it back about an inch or two. Um, I usually don't remove the entire backing. I have found that it's easier to control where it's getting placed and to make sure that it goes on straight if I do it a little bit at a time. So now that my temperature strip is on the side of my jar, I'm just gonna take a clean dry rag and kind of rub over the top of it just to make sure it's really stuck on there. So once I removed my beverage dispenser from the box and eliminated all the extra packaging, I started off by removing the plastic spigot that came on my beverage dispenser and replaced it with a stainless steel one. Once I was done with that, I wiped off the side of the jar really well and I added a temperature strip. Again, the temperature strip is an extra thing. It's not something that you need, but it is kind of nice to know how quickly your kombucha tea comes up to the fermentation stage that you like taste-wise based on the temperature that it is in your house. This is an 
added step, again, if you're looking to eliminate a couple bucks, I would definitely skip this and add the stainless steel spigot. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my jar over to my sink. I'm gonna fill it halfway full of water, like I said before, and make sure that my spigot is not leaking anywhere. Once that's done, you can add some apple cider vinegar or white distilled vinegar to your container and clean your jar out really well so you can add your tea and your SCOBY. All right, so now I'm just gonna add some lukewarm tap water to my jar up past the spigot just to make sure it's not gonna leak anywhere around these gaskets. You would hate to put your kombucha in here and have it leaking all over your counter. So now's a good time just to check it. So I filled up my beverage dispenser about an inch past the spigot here, and there is no leaks coming anywhere from around here, which is a good thing. So once you know that your spigot is not leaking from anywhere, you can set it up on the side of your sink and make sure that the water drains out without any issues. And this one is draining just fine. So now I'm gonna add five or six tablespoons of this white distilled vinegar to my container, give it a good scrub and rinse it out. So once I've wiped out my container really well, I like to set this up on the side of my cabinet again and drain some of the vinegar water through the spigot. I do like to do this a couple of times since the beverage that I'm going to be pouring out of here is something that I'm going to ingest. I like to make sure that this is nice and clean. So once I'm finished with that, I give the container a good rinse. So now that my dispenser and my spigot have been thoroughly cleaned with some hot water and white distilled vinegar, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it off so I can add my sweet tea and my SCOBY to my container. So one thing you wanna make sure before you actually do this step is that your spigot is turned closed. Don't start pouring your tea in there without checking that first, otherwise your tea is gonna start draining out that spigot and you're gonna to have to start all over again. So check that to make sure it's closed and then add your sweet tea mixture to your brewing vessel. So I brewed a batch of black tea this morning. It is definitely at room temperature. It's been sitting for about seven hours. I'm gonna add that to my beverage dispenser. Now I'm gonna add some other filtered water so it fills all the way up. Make sure you leave enough room to add your SCOBY. So now I'm gonna take my batch of kombucha tea. I'm gonna set it over near my Berkey, which is out of direct sunlight. I'm gonna add my SCOBY, put my cover on it, and I'm gonna let it sit for seven days while I'm gone. By the time I get home, it should be fermented enough to add to the bottles with some flavoring, put it in the refrigerator, and ready to enjoy. So now I'm gonna add this really thick, beautiful, healthy SCOBY to my tea. So if you don't have a cover that is made specifically for your brewing vessel, you can use a tea towel or a white washcloth like I'm using here, secured on by a rubber band. I'll be sure and link some specific kombucha covers below in the description box. Now it's time to label your vessel. This is a really important step so you know how quickly your tea ferments. Put the date, you can put the time if you want, the date is definitely sufficient. If you don't wanna use a post-it, you can use a reusable chalkboard label and a pen. So that's all there is to creating your own simple continuous brew system for your kombucha tea at home. It really is that easy and cost effective to do. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think and I'll see you for my next video. Bye guys.